In this video tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to set up the new H.264 compression cameras, uh, mainly the FI9821W new H.264 camera from Foscam. Um, this tutorial will cover most uh, of the latest H.264 compression cameras, uh, such as maybe the FI9802W uh, and other uh, FI9 uh, models uh, to come. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is go ahead and get started. Uh, make sure your camera, uh, in this case I'm using the FI9A21W, make sure it's connected to your router with an Ethernet cord uh, and the power is plugged into the back of the camera. And also make sure this computer um, that you're on, uh, the computer that I'm on, it's connected to FOSCAM2. So I'm connected to the same network that the camera is connected to. So make sure that your computer, whichever computer it is, if it's connected with a wire, or if it's connected with wireless, just make sure that your computer is connected to the same router as the camera is. Um, if it's not, you won't be able to see uh, the camera in the software over here. Uh, so once you've done that, uh, and the camera started up, and it's, it's, it's done its whole uh, startup routine of panning and tilting, um, basically what you want to do is use either the CD that came with the camera to install the IP camera tool software, uh, or you can download it from our, our main website at foscam.us under the support tab at the top um, and it's under I believe the CD software uh, installation uh, subsection you can download it uh, from there the Windows uh, for Windows PC uh, version just click it click on it download it and once you install it it's going to come uh, on your desktop over here as IP camera tool so let's go ahead and double click this and this is the IP camera tool window. And we see that the camera has come up um, connected to our router. We see that it has an IP address and also a port associated with it. So our camera is on the IP address 10.44.82.107. And the port is 88 for our camera, uh, which is great. So your camera should come up uh, like this. It might not be the same IP address, it'll probably be something like 192.168.0.1 or .1.1 or 10.0.0.1. It really all depends what type of router you have. Um, so in this case, ours came up as this, 10.44.82.107. And your port for the FI9A21W camera or any of the, the newer H.264 cameras, they will come with this uh, port 8.8 by default so don't worry about that uh, until the port forwarding video um, so now uh, that the camera came up that's great so uh, let's go ahead and just double check our network configurations because we need to make sure that the camera is running on a local uh, static IP address so uh, the way we do this is we're gonna highlight the camera so just click on it once right click it and then go to network configuration so on network configuration, you're going to see a lot of different values over here. Uh, IP address, subnet mask, gateway, DNS server. If you've installed the Foscam camera before, you're probably kind of familiar with this. If you've never installed the camera before, uh, what we're doing here is we just need to make sure that uh, the camera's configuration, its network configuration, is matching with our own uh, router's network configuration. So we're basically just matching everything. So the way to do this on, p on, on Windows is we need to open up a command prompt. And the way you do this on Windows XP or Windows 7 is you're going to click on the Windows logo down here, the Start menu button. And you'll search, or you're, you're going to click Run, um, but you'll type in CMD and push Enter. Or you'll see CMD right here in Windows 7 or uh, Windows Vista, you'll see it. And you can click on CMD. And it's going to open up a command prompt like this. On Windows 8, uh, on the right side of the screen, you can uh, go and drag your mouse over here and it'll open up the search tab at the right at the right side. You can click search, type in CMD in the search and you'll it'll it should pop up uh, command prompt or CMD and you can click on that and it'll pop this up. So once we open up the command prompt, we're going to go ahead and open up or type in ipconfig and push enter. And ipconfig basically shows us a lot of different information about our networks. Uh, but we're mainly concerned with the one that we're connected to, which is going to be this one right here. And the main things that we want to see and that we want to match are the first 
for the IP address, we want to make sure that the first three cycles of the IP address are the same, which is called a subnet usually. So the subnet is like 10.44.82, these first three sections. We want to make sure that that matches up with what we have. So our IP address for the camera is 10.44.82.107. And the IP address for our computer, the computer that I'm on right now, yours is probably going to be different. Mine is 10.44.82. And this last, this last section is going to be different, is 143. So that's the IP address of the computer. Now we just want to make sure, <coughs> make sure that the first three sections are the same. So 10.44.82. 10.44.82, that's great. This last, this fourth section right here for the, lo the local IP address, that is always going to be different for any type of device that you have. So since we're connecting a camera to our network, it has to have its own separate local IP address compared to everything else. So you might have a printer, you might have a computer connected, you might have a laptop connected to your router. All of them have separate IP addresses. So you can see that my computer has an IP address of 143 at the end. So, for example, I can't make the camera here. I cannot change it to 143 at the end because I already have a device that's at 143. What I need to do is I can make it something like 144 or I can make it 142 or something like that. So an IP address that is not shared with any other device. So right now I believe 107 is free. It's not being taken up by anything else. So I'm just going to leave it at 107. And you can change it to whatever you'd like. Um, anything from... 100 to 200 usually works well because there's no there's not that many devices on on a network to take up that many IP addresses. So you can change it to whatever you want, 100, 101, 102, whatever. I'm going to change it to 107, keep it at 107. But the main thing is seeing that these first three sections of the IP address are the same and they are over here. So make sure that that's the same. If it's not, just change it. Um, the subnet mask, we want to make sure that that matches up exactly. So we have 255, 255, 2550, and that's the same over here. The gateway, we want to make sure that matches up exactly. 10448273, and we see 10448273 over here. And the DNS server is usually going to be the same as the gateway, 10448273, um, and that looks good for us. So uh, one quick tip is actually the, the default gateway. This IP address is actually the IP address of your router. So later on in the wireless uh, video and also in the port forwarding video, uh, I'll most, most likely ask you to uh, go into your router and check out the wireless, um, the wireless encryption that's in your, in your router. And you'll need this IP address to go ahead and do that. So whatever your gateway IP address is, just make a note of that because you'll probably need that for the next uh, tutorials uh, in this uh, video series. So once everything is matched up, we see that everything is correct. Um, the HTTP port is 88. That's great. We'll, we can change that later on in the port voiding video, but for now, just leave it uh, as it is. And over here, you see the username and password. Um, if you are going to be changing anything over here, you just need to make sure that the username is uh, admin or whatever you have set it to. By default, it's always going to be admin. And the password is by default usually either blank. You can leave it. Um, by itself with, no, with nothing typed in or the password might be admin so you would type in admin here and the only way it's going to let you change these values is if you put in the correct username and password so make sure you put that in correctly and then push OK if you're changing anything since I'm not changing anything I can just click the X I don't have to worry about anything I can click cancel whatever it is and that'll go away I made sure that everything was the same so that's great I don't need this command prompt anymore and now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to log into the camera with each different browser. Uh, I know some people like to use uh, Google Chrome, some people like to use uh, uh, Mozilla Firefox, and some people like to use Internet Explorer. So whatever you like to use, I'm going to show you how to use each one. Because with this new camera, with, this, with these new H.264 compression cameras, there's actually a new web interface. And that a web interface requires a plugin for each browser. So let me go ahead and show you that. If I double click on this camera, it opens my default, uh, my default browser, which is Google Chrome over here. And you can see uh, in the login page, it says that the top plugins are not found. Click me to download. 
So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on that uh, to download the plugin because if I don't, for, for instance, if I don't download the plugin and I try to log in, so let me go ahead and log in with the password I set. If I log in, uh, you can see I got in and I can see like different settings and things like that but I don't have any way to see live video. There's no way for me to see live video at all. Um, there's no button on the left side or anything like that. So the reason we need the plugin is to actually see live video and see the, the full features of everything. So what I'll do is I can go ahead and refresh this. And what I need to do is I need to download the plugin. So I'm gonna click on, click me to download, plugins are not found. And it's gonna download right here in Chrome, plugins five. Dot .crx, that just says 5 because it's the fifth one I've downloaded. Um, over here it says apps extensions and user scripts cannot be added from this website. That's just uh, Google Chrome telling us that uh, we need to just um, add uh, the add-on from a Google source or whatever it is, but you can always add the add-on manually, which I'm going to show. So I'll go ahead and uh, show the, the download in the folder and it's here we see it downloaded to our downloads folder plugins 5.crx which is for chrome i'm just going to move this over here for a second and what we have to do is we have to open up the extensions tab in chrome so we're going to click on the top right control panel here i'm going to go to tools extensions it opens up the extensions tab it says i don't have any extensions so what i'm going to do is drag the extension that i downloaded into this tab I'm going to click on this, drag it over, and see it says drop to install. I'm going to drop it. It's going to say add IP cam. And I do want to do this. I want to confirm a new extension. So I'm going to add it. And you can see it's added now. It says IP cam has been added to Chrome. That's great. So I can exit out of this. And I can actually refresh it. And you can see the dialog went away. It doesn't say to install the plugin anymore. So we know that we're safe. The plugin's installed correctly. So we don't have to worry about anything. And what you're going to do is just go, going to go ahead and log in. I've set up a, a password already for my camera, but uh, your default password will either be blank, so you would put nothing, or you would put admin. And you would click login. So I'm going to put my password. And I'm going to click login. Um, just to go over this real quick, username default is always going to be admin unless you add it later. Um, password is default blank or admin, or if you set it to something else. Media port is something new uh, with the H.264 cameras that I'll go into in port forwarding. Um, basically, you'll have to por port forward this port as well when we go into port forwarding. Um, the stream, if you have H.264 cameras, you know that there's a, a mainstream and a substream. Mainstream is the high quality video. And you can use substream if you'd like for a smaller resolution video, but usually it's a little faster because the quality is... Uh, is not uh, as high quality as the mainstream. And then the language, self-explanatory, just choose your language. And we're going to click login. So if I click login, it's going to take me to the live video. And you can see my, uh, my desk right here, actually. The camera is on my desk. I can move it around. And we know that we can see live video with no problems. And that's it. That's great. So in Chrome, I can see live video. I have the pan and tilt controls here. I can mirror, you know, I can flip all in Google Chrome. I have recording options. I have snapshots. I can use audio in Chrome, uh, something that we that you couldn't do with 910 or 918 cameras or 904, 905 cameras. Uh, well, you couldn't do that anyways, but for the, the, audio, ca the audio cameras that we had, the MJPEG compression, you couldn't do it before. So, but now you can do it in Chrome with this new interface. So, um, let me go ahead and show you how to do this in Firefox. So I'll get out of Chrome real quick. Close this. So in Firefox, if I want to look at live video, I'll open up Firefox. I'm going to go to the IP address of the camera. And you'll see I already have it in here, 10.44.82.107.88. And it opened up uh, this uh, page, the login page, and you can see it says plugins not found again. Click to download. So we're going to go ahead and click that. We want to save plugins.xpi, which is for Firefox. I'm going to push OK. And you'll see it's here. We want to open the location of the folder because we need to drag it in. So we open it up. 
So over here again, so what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it in to Mozilla Firefox. And once you drag it in, sometimes it might take like 10 to 15 seconds for Firefox to uh, bring up the prompt here. And you see it's uh, telling you that um, you're going to install the IP cam add-on. You want to click install now. And now that it's installed, um, we actually need to restart Firefox. So we'll close this. We can close this again. We'll open up Firefox. And we'll go to the camera again. And we see it's here again, 10448217 colon 88. And you see the dialog went away at the top. It's not there anymore. So we know the plugin is installed correctly. Let's just log in real quick, put in the default password. Yours is either blank or it's admin. I'm going to click log in. And we can see video again. Perfect. This is in Firefox. And you can do audio. You can record video. You can take snapshots. IR lights, everything, the entire full full features of the camera are here. Um, multiple cameras, you know, everything is, is here in Chrome and Firefox. Uh, so you don't have to worry about using Internet Explorer anymore only if you want to use some uh, specific features. And now let's go ahead and use Internet Explorer. So if I close that and I just want to use Internet Explorer, I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. I'm going to go ahead and put in the IP address of the camera. Here it is. And it's going to be here. And you'll see in Internet Explorer, there's no text here, but it does say at the bottom, this web page wants to run the following add-on, Foscam IP camera. And we need to allow this. So we're going to click Allow. And it's asking me if I want to make Internet Explorer my default browser. I'll click No. So we allowed the add-on to run and install. So it's gone ahead and installed to Internet Explorer. And what we're going to do is just log in again. I'm going to log in with my password. Yours is either blank or it's admin. And I'm going to click log in. And it logs in, and I should be able to see video. And there we go. That's great. So I can see video. can move it around. It is a little laggy for me, but I believe it's probably because of all the network uh, data going on. But you can see live video and everything like that. So everything is uh, set up properly. And that basically completes the initial setup for the FI9 A21 W camera as well as other H.264 new compression cameras. So go ahead and stay tuned for our next video, which is the wireless setup for these cameras. And uh, I'll be seeing you there.